for years, a phrase popular in Christian circles was, Christianity is not about a religion, but about a relationship. Imagine that concept and placing that premium on relationships, not just between God and people, but between people of different faiths. That's exactly what's happening right here in Texas with sweeping impact made all the more striking in these polarized times. This song says, live and he loved me. This is not your typical Sunday service. Dying, he saved me. That's because it's not a worship service at all. Welcome to an unlikely forum on faith, bringing three of the world's major religions together under one roof. I thought all Muslims wanted to kill me and all Muslims were extremists and all Muslims were bad people. And I found out I was wrong. The goal, begin conversations, gain trust and build relationships to solve problems big and small. This all evolved out of a friendship between an evangelical pastor and a Muslim cleric sharing a desire to help religious leaders and their congregations see and treat each other as neighbors. We want to stand for the religious freedom of everybody. We want to roll our sleeves to feed people in our community, to heal people who are sick, to bring understanding among our people. That's what it's all about. For young people in attendance, that involved packing thousands of meals for area residents in need. Everybody came in wanting to help and do something kind for the community, and so I think that like united us all. And everybody was just here, like having fun and working. One high-profile result of the movement came during January's attack at a North Dallas synagogue by a lone gunman. The person uh, that we're most grateful for that, that came out of this was Rabbi Charlie Citron Walker. Come on, Charlie. Pastor Roberts leveraged relationships with other faith leaders to bring calm to the hostage standoff and cement support across the faith spectrum. In the aftermath of trauma, every message was an affirmation that our community was a part of the human family and that we're all in this together. That message, endorsed by Trump, Biden, and Obama administration officials promoting religious freedom at a time when those freedoms are under attack and anti-Semitism is on the rise. You can't address hatred against Jews without uh, confronting hatred against all people. Every human being has a right to live with freedom in the peaceful practice of their religion. A key driver in the multi-faith movement, support for a Muslim document called the Maka Charter, promoting peace, denouncing terrorism, and advocating universal rights like religious freedom for all. As a Jesus-loving evangelical, my goal is to say, hey, I'm grateful and excited that you're wanting to do this. I want, I want to work with you because it has a huge impact on how Christians are treated and all over the world. Attendees like this woman from Philadelphia say highlighting our similarities is reassuring as America grows more divided. When you focus on the things that you have that are uh, more alike than different, um, you can have unity without uniformity. While some see the effort as blending religious beliefs, organizers insist that's not the case. This is about a deep relationship and commitment to friendship. And it doesn't water down individual faiths. It does faiths. not water down religion. That's why I call it multi-faith. This is like a salad bowl, not milk in pot. The people involved in the Multi-Faith Neighbors Network say this is not about syncretism, the blending of different doctrines, rather about starting a dialogue and building relationships with the goal of yielding real fruit, like the kind that was modeled here earlier this year at the Congregation Beth Israel, when the world witnessed a true sense of friendship and community when Christians, Muslims, and Jews came together. John Jessup, CBN News, Tarrant County, Texas.